Hello everyone and welcome back to Make Better Wedding Films, the home of new ideas for radical films about people in love. My name is Ben, I will be your host and before we get into the show we've just got a couple announcements to get through. First of which is that this episode is sponsored by Musicbed. If you guys want the best possible music for your films, there is no other choice than Musicbed really. Um, they've got the best music and the best way to find that music. So, you know, one of the standout features of Musicbed is its curation, both from the Musicbed team itself and from third party creators. You know, some of the best wedding, wedding filmmakers in the world, YouTubers, content creators have come together on Musicbed to create curated collections of music to help you guys find awesome tracks for your films so if you guys want to go and check out music bed and try out their stuff uh, they've got a subscription specifically designed for wedding filmmakers and if you want your first month free of that just use the promo code mbwf at checkout you get your first month free and you'll let them know that we sent you which helps out the show Second way to help out the show is to uh, use the Patreon. So basically, Patreon is a platform for you to directly support the content creators that you love. So if you like our show, if you've been getting value out of it, uh, if we've helped you come up with new ideas for your wedding films, if we've helped you develop as a wedding filmmaker, we'd love for you to support us on Patreon. Uh, patrons get some awesome extra bonuses like access to a Q&A thread to ask our guests questions ahead of the episodes. Um, and all sorts of cool stuff. So yeah, just go to patreon.com forward slash MBWF to find out more about that. That is going to be the number one way that you guys can show your support for the show, help us keep the lights on, help this thing go on for the long haul. Uh, final announcement in the in the uh, announcement sheet here is to let you guys know that we've dropped our first digital product. So Cinematic LUTs Volume 1 is a LUT pack that I've been working on for several months now. It includes four unique looks designed specifically for wedding films. If you guys want to check that out, we'll have a link below, Cinematic Lutz Volume 1. And um, hopefully, depending on when you're listening to this, you might have a couple of days extra to get our launch week offer. So if you use the promo code LAUNCH20, um, depending on when you're listening to the episode and when you do, you'll get 20% off for your order on that. Um, yeah, basically, that's it. That's it. the announcements for the show. That's everything we need to let you guys know about on to the episode. We've talked a bit about being an empathetic filmmaker on this podcast before, and today's guest is yet another example of why this skill is a vital piece of the puzzle when it comes to making truly unique and standout work. Being able to connect with your couples first and foremost and make a film that's for them not for you or your ego as a creative, but for them is what results in art that has substance behind it. Monica's work is beautiful, raw, delicate, and timeless. She's one of those creatives who is clearly comfortable with their tool, comfortable with the rules of filmmaking, and confident about breaking them in the best possible way. My name is Ben, and this is Make Better Wedding Films. Hello, hello, hello. Freaking Hi. excited. Thank you for inviting me. You're very welcome. I'm I'm gonna have my little fangirl moments. I've been really excited to speak to you for like years. <laughs> um yeah, so basically I found you back in like I think it was like 2016. A long time ago. A yeah. long time ago. And I think the first wow. film I saw of yours was Eliza and Min, I think is their name. Yeah. Wow. Yes. That was a cool video. That film. Yeah, that was a very cool <laughs> video. That was back when I was like, oh, weddings are really traditional and whatever. And then I saw that film and I was like, oh, my God, this is a better way of doing mm. films. Like, weddings don't have to be boring. So really excited to be talking to you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I, got, I, 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 think, I think I'm more classic now. <laughs> I used to be fun, like more fun. No, before. your stuff's always so fun. Your stuff is always so fun. Um, basically, so my little first question for you is where you get all your inspiration from. You started hard. <laughs> <laughs> Which is such a hard, such a hard right question. Right in there. Like. Uh, um, I have to say that um, I'm a pretty weird um, artist, if, I, if we're going to call ourselves that, because I, I think... I, 
I don't look for inspiration. Like, okay, so I couldn't make a list that which places I go to when I need inspiration. I think it's something that comes, like it's in your head and you don't know it's there, if that makes any sense. So I guess <laughs> my inspiration comes from, well, the classics, you know, like movies and like music videos and some like videos I watch on Vimeo and magazines and people and parties. I don't know. <laughs> like, I mean, in my opinion, the thing is that I, it's not something that like, okay, I need some inspiration. I'm going to go here and find something. I think w the things that I do are probably inspired in some other stuff, but I don't, I'm not sure where they come from. I think it's, it's a whole bunch of stuff um, that happens in my life. Mm. I hate this question, I have to say, because I, I, I can't say like, oh, I watch classic films and I get money. I hate classic films. Um, I, I get bored. I love new <laughs> cinema. <laughs> No, but so, I'm the same. I'm the same. I don't go searching for it. But sometimes, like, you know, you see, like, someone's work you really love and you're like, how did they get there? Like, how did they form that style? But it's nice to know that yours is just, like, a gradual thing as well. I think I just, I, I, I really don't know. I think it's, it's a, everything that surrounds us in some way put little stuff in our head that eventually we use for, for making things that, that we like. I don't know. It's it's kind of weird. I, I don't know where, where that comes from. Just Sorry. organic. <laughs> yeah. What's your motivation? What's your motivation when you're making like wedding films? Because it can be so such a repetitive process. Like how do you keep it fun and fresh? Um this is gonna sound like a bit corny, but my main motivation is that my clients like their video so all I want to do is make something that it's meaningful for them and then when they watch it they say this is us and this is our wedding and it feels maybe a little bit better than it was but they can find their wedding and their day and their cells in that video if that makes any sense mm -hmm. that like I just think about them and their family and I don't know. Sometimes I think about huh, the people that follow me are going to see it. Should I do this or do that? I have that yeah. shit in my head and it's so sad because it wasn't there when I started. So I think that's, mm. that's why my videos were like fresh. -er. But, um, but yeah, I think my main motivation is to do a video that's meaningful for them. So that's, mm -hmm. I think that's why I'm getting like more emotional every, mm -hmm. like the time goes by and I'm like, I don't know, my videos are slower and more intimate or I don't know how mm -hmm. to describe them, but yeah. they used to be fun and now they're not. <laughs> I would not describe your work like that, no. by the way. <laughs> your films actually get better and better, probably because, as you said, like you're actually picking people apart more and more and more, so they're actually getting better. As if they're, <laughs> they're definitely better. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think it's it's something that's come up um, a few times when I've when we've been talking with people, and I think I think it's not unrelated the fact that you're a female filmmaker and the and the idea that like you're talking about i guess the difference between like empathy versus ego like you're doing something around like being empathetic towards your um your clients and like tuning into what they need um rather than doing something for you and thinking like how can i make something that's creative for me and that's a, a creative expression for me you're tuning into what your clients want and um whenever I've spoken and whenever we've spoken to filmmakers who like that's their driving force, like it just sort of, it makes their work stand out compared to everybody else's. And it just gives it a sort of a heart, you know, a, a realness that, um, that can't come from when you're doing stuff from an ego st 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 standpoint. I think we like, 
we all have that fucking ego somewhere, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. sadly. But um, but yeah, empathet- em- empathy. It's um, it's some- something that I talk about a lot in my when when I do when I talk to other people because um, it's not only when when editing; it's also when shooting. Um, and I think it's something that comes um, like people can see. They don't they don't know what it is, but you can you can see it and you can feel it in a video. You know. It's like it's made for them, and and if they don't know why they like it better, it's not only because because I I had um, feedback from people that don't know the like we don't know that people and we're crying, and I think that's that's because they there's empathy it's coming out in some way I don't know how. Yeah, it's. There'll be the yeah. It's it's harder to put your finger on. There's just yeah. There's an, there's a level of of intuition going on there, and there's it's kind of something I wanted to um, bring out with you and your work because like your work is like it's it's the kind of work I look at, and the like there's look that there's people's there's creative work you look at, and you can see that there's a lot of skill behind it, and. Um, whilst I, I look at your work and there's definitely skill, but there's something that's often not there when I look at work and that's taste and like a, an incredible taste level. That's sort of like <laughs> the, you know, you can sort of, you can learn skills, but it's a lot harder to like learn taste. <laughs> and so I guess I wanted to like she's talk to you about she's the already on the podcast and skill. <laughs> I, just, I, well, I'm I, complimenting I wanted her. to, I wanted to learn, like sort of, I guess, get your perspective on, um, Dude, that's the on best how- compliment ever. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I fucking love you, Ben. <laughs> oh, we love you too, Monica. <laughs> Thank um, you. I love but yeah, how do you, how do you work on your taste? And I guess, you know, it's a lot harder <laughs> to put your finger on. Hmm. I think, um, I think that's the most, I mean, you did like great with your compliment, but <laughs> no, the question is like, how do I explain this? Yeah. I don't know, man. <laughs> I think that's something that you have. Um, I've tried to, um, to have um, assistance or people helping me. And maybe that thing that you said, it's the thing that I can't get them to understand or or do and eventually I just end up alone because I always have to correct things and say no this is I'm a fucking mm, very picky and I I am a very late deliverer <laughs> I, I <laughs> my video is very late because I take time but the taste part um, I really don't know where that comes from I don't know, my mom, she had a great taste. Yeah. <laughs> um, I, I don't know. It's like... Is, is there a point where you felt like like sort of technically competent and then you started to sort of like look elsewhere? Because, you know, like your work involves um, a lot well, of... I, I, this, I, before yeah. doing weddings, I, mm. I worked in commercial videos. Um, wedding skin after because I did like the exactly opposite I was working in a production company and I was working for very high-end brands and like doing ads so maybe now that I think about it maybe it comes from there because that was very demanding and they were like very picky and take that person out and you know it was it was um it was advertising so it was kind of um, a different way of seeing things. Everything yeah. had to be perfect. So maybe mm-hmm. it comes from there. Yeah. And like working to a brief and um, yeah. And cause like, did you work with different like creative directors and like sort of having to like fulfill other people's sort of like creative vision in a sense? Yeah. Um, actually um, I wasn't the head cause I was an assistant <laughs> back then when I used to work like that. Once I had everything a little bit um, set up, I said, okay, I can do this by myself. Let's find something (laughs) 
where I can drink at night, wake up late, work, <laughs> work less hours, <laughs> which was a um, bad choice. But um, I just went away. So I, I was never the head videographer when I used to work um, in advertising. I was like the second hand the right hand and assistant so I wasn't taking all the the um, decisions but I was there listening and, and yeah fulfilling it's so other interesting people. today because Grace used to work her first job editing was as a junior editor at an ad agency like an international ad agency mm -hmm. so it's so interesting to me because she's always been such a fan of your work to see that you guys have like similar back. And I started I started editing actually. Um before I started editing way before I started shooting. Um I yeah, was afraid yeah. of shooting. I thought I was not gonna be good, which are I, I think I'm not because I'm not a very technical person. So for me it it's very overwhelming all the things that now I have to buy a new camera and like things are changing and for me it's like fuck. Um, I, hate, I actually hate technology. I just have to use it because this is what I love. But um, so, yeah, I started editing before, before I started shooting. Yeah, so like I think that. that's... same. I've never actually shot, so <laughs> I don't actually shoot. I just love it. editing and storytelling. But I maintain all the best storytellers are the ones who really love editing. Like I feel like your edits are pretty yes. immaculate with your story. So woohoo. Advertising people unite. <laughs> um, Do you I guess, like, like editing or shooting more? Uh, I love editing because that's where the magic happens. And I used to, I used to have to edit like shitty footage, like a lot of events also that were like shitty shooter shooting, and like, and, and I had to make it like a cool thing. So I love to do that, like to fix in, in editing all my fuck ups when I shoot, because I <laughs> do fuck up a lot. And when I, when I see that they don't, they don't see it, they can't see it. And it's like a cool video where maybe I don't have the bride coming in with her father because somehow I fucked that up and <laughs> they don't see it. It's like amazing editing. It's magic i love it but it's also my achilles um fuck it what's the word after Heel. 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 <laughs> no, okay sorry because yeah, um, i spend a lot of time inside the cave this cave and yeah and i'm too white and i need to say <laughs> that's why i, I love coronavirus yeah. sorry but in my case not for everybody else like lockdown was the best ever for me. Yeah. Get some time yeah. yourself. Sorry. Go outside. Yeah. <laughs> Introverts. I enjoyed paradise. it a little too. <laughs> it's interesting though because I feel like the common perception in wedding video world, especially, and we're so insulated in this industry, is that like, oh, you have to be an amazing shooter to produce amazing films, and like, or a big tech person, yeah, or a tech, yeah. And I feel like. For years, Grace has been dealing with my shitty footage, and you're saying that you know you're not necessarily the most technical shooter either. But you know the proof is in the pudding. Like the editing is incredible, and it it does make up for like like all that matters is story. Like that's what we connect with. Not like was that shot technically perfect? Was it purely in focus? I think if you go back and look at like all of the films of the past, however many hundreds of years, like that doesn't who gives a fuck about if they're technically perfect. What do you, how do you Dude, feel? I cry. I cry with like videos on YouTube, phone recorder videos of a kid hugging her father or whatever <laughs> with it with yeah. the most cheesy music ever, and I'm like, <laughs> and you're crying. So yeah. the thing is, choose your music well, tell your story well, and then shoot how you can. <laughs> you can oh, I'm gonna put that on a bumper. <laughs> <laughs> choose your music well man that's for me that's <laughs> the most important part of my films yeah, yeah that's how, long, how, how long does it take you to, to sort of go through and choose music for your films okay you're gonna make have to cut this part yeah i know you guys are 
I know you guys are have music, but um, <laughs> doing like supporting this, <laughs> and I do not use licensed music. <laughs> That's how we're going to open the episode. Yes. So, so maybe you want to take this part out. Yeah, so good. Uh, Fuck it, let's go. Okay. Um, I use any music I want, um, and I'm actually I'm, I'm actually looking forward to the moment I'm in a trial and I have to do like give my. <laughs> My speech about why I think everyone should be able to use any music they want for a wedding video, obviously. Uh, yeah. But that's another episode. That's another episode. Okay. So um, I spend a lot of time looking for music because I, I, I even have a bigger pond of music because I can, like, it's infinite. So I spent days and days looking for them. But I do have, like, lists that I um, make when I found music um, and I put it there and I have like 200 lists. Um, they're mostly based on moods and pace and like, like the ones you have on the thing you use. <laughs> that <company>. Music bed. <laughs> yeah, music bed. Um, uh, or art list. I do have a, a, an account on the company. <laughs> the company. <laughs> the competition. <laughs> the competition. I use art list. Oh, um, yeah. Sorry. Cool. We just <laughs> lost our music bed sponsorship. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I secretly no, I, use Mama Set too. Mama Set. <laughs> no. Not Mama just Set. Just cut this part, Ben. We don't oh, need yeah. it. Yeah. Um, cut it and just put it as its own so it's social cut. But yeah, for me, it's it's the most important. Like once I call all my material and I have everything, my mise en place, where mm. everything is there, um, I almost edit the the audio first and then just put the images on top. So mm. it's music. It's the answer to your yeah. problems. <laughs> And in terms of like going back to, I guess what we we're talking about a little bit earlier around like your storytelling, how you approach your storytelling. Um, I don't know. You've got like a really like, I don't know, like a raw element to um, your films. Like how are you, how are you approaching the storytelling element? Um, I guess just to make it feel like as real and as like in the moment as possible. That you 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 are a very good observer. Uh, no, because that's that's something that I always have in mind. Um, I do not want my videos to look like a perfume ad. Um, I do want them to be emotional and be beautiful, and I do want the dress flowy and all that shit. But I don't want to like make this um a drama movie so um I'm, I'm always keeping in mind that i want to keep it real um and that's why i shoot handheld i think it helps a lot um not using rigs or anything because um if something i learn about movies is that when a director wants something to look raw they just move the fucking camera so simple <laughs> as that mm. um so i always shoot handheld every, like always and I think that keeps, it gives it that I'm here. So you feel mm. there's somebody behind the camera and gives you that realness. And then I'm just trying, like every, every year, I try to use more real moments, like to, to leave the audio of the moment and to mm. not be so like fast paced when I edit. Mm. So it doesn't feel that much as like a music video, but more like a movie. So you can feel the moment and be inside of it just a bit more, and then and, I, and then I get you out fast. It's not mm. I, I try to edit like in a way so you go like on a little roller coaster. It's it's not flat, mm. but I think it's that it's like handheld shooting and leaving the audio and just like going in and out of the the story if that makes sense. Mm. Yeah, with like crescendos. Yeah. What? With what? crescendos, like you get sucked yeah, in and then all uh, of a sudden yeah. you snap out of totally. it. Yeah. 
And because that's, yeah. I was talking about that with Grace just the, the other day around like the need for that in editing in storytelling. We need peaks and valleys because no matter what the energy is, whether it's slow and emotional or if it's fast paced and energetic, if it's that the whole way through, it gets tedious no matter what it is. Totally. So we need that the peaks and valleys to sort of take us along like that, that little roller coaster. Um, totally. Yeah. People get, get bored very, very fast. Yeah. I mean, not the couple because they're going to love anything. Like, this yeah. is going to sound bad. But... No, but it's true. It's true. The but, couple will like I mean, anything. Yeah. Of them, it's, really. Yeah. I mean, there's a few Bretzillas swimming around yeah. hmm. that they will like say things but in the in the, like the majority of the clients they love it it's their grandparents and their kids and it's their family and they've never seen themselves shot on on a good camera and it's like wow they're like blown away but um the people that hire you they don't know any any of them and that's mm. the, you need to get them in the wave so they finish the video because in my case, I don't share short videos. Mm. So I do need I do need to keep people entertained. Mm. It's not my main goal, but I don't want it people to get bored. So. Yeah. 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 No, you 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 yeah, you you certainly have a like a confident um, way of sharing your work on so social media. It's just like here it is watch it <laughs> yeah it's it's like <laughs> compared to like I, you know compared to like we chatted with russell kent nichols the other day who like does everything to the book of like morphing his work for social media like does the aspect ratios and the different cuts and stories and slides and and then like you're on the other other end of the spectrum where it's like here's a film and the people who are going to be interested in watching the film are going to watch the film and they're your clients so you know there's like there's no right or wrong way to go about doing things, but you know, um, yeah. Uh, no, pro just, there's probably yeah. a writer way than mine. I I'm mean, sure. <laughs> I don't know. But, <laughs> but I know, I, I, I don't know. I get the clients that hmm. like, I think I somehow do it, but cl the clients I get are people that appreciate my craft, which is hmm. the only thing I want. Yeah. It's people that say, okay, we've watched so many wedding films and yours mm. caught our eye. And that's it. That's all. That's mm. the client. I, I, I can't do more weddings in a year. So, yeah. and please don't ask yeah. the number. Yeah. Because <laughs> they're very little. Yeah. No, no. I, I'm doing it like less weddings a year every time. I, re I re The other day I was looking into like my old... Um, files from weddings and I was like fuck I did 20 23 weddings this year like that year and I was like whoa <laughs> I can't do can, 23 can weddings I can't You've been stripping it's like back impossible to Mm. Yeah, I feel like it's almost impossible. the better you get and the more invested you get in each wedding and each couple, the more you want to strip it back how many you do a year because it's just like it saps a lot of energy and time like it's enjoyable but it takes so much to put it together that you start to burn totally. out. Like you cannot, especially with your style, like you can't maintain that across 20 plus weddings. Like that's fucking crazy. It's yeah, we're that's really why doing I'm shooting photography. How much oh, are yeah. you doing? Oh, yeah. How much? <laughs> we'll tell you if you tell us. I'll tell, we'll tell <laughs> you, you tell us. <laughs> oh, um, I had for 2020, I had, before everything happened, I had eight <laughs> weddings. Mm. Yeah, we're we're doing fifteen a year now because yeah, so there's two of us as well. Mm. Yeah, yeah that's you, like what when when it's like, uh, people say like, and, and I'm not complaining, but I'm all by myself doing this, mm. so it's not only mm. shooting and editing; it's everything it's else not. that I'm doing by myself. I have to answer all the emails. I have to do all the billing. Apps. I'm sorry, but <laughs> I can't. I don't know how that. That's why I'm shooting photography also, because that mm. thing is so easy, right? <laughs> photography is so easy. <laughs> yeah, Dude, yeah. I don't know about, I don't know so about you, easier. but it pisses me off that it photographers is. get to charge more than us 
Like that doesn't happen to us anymore. But when we started, I was like, man, you're working half as hard and making twice the money. I don't get it. Yeah. Um, we just lost. We lost. Uh, we lost a portion of. We just lost a portion of our audience who are photographers, but that's fine. <laughs> we love you. Guys. We, love we love you. you. We love you. We love you. Yeah. <laughs> you lazy. That's why. Like, yeah. The other day, I found a thread of photographers complaining about videographers getting in their shot, and I was like, <clears throat> "What? Yeah. <laughs> Don't get me started, hold, dudes. Uh, hold my beer. <laughs> This is why I don't film. I'd be like, yeah. mm, nah, I'm out. I can't handle it. <laughs> Just do my post-production and drink my drink and enjoy. <laughs> no, I have to say that um, during the wedding, photography is um, harder because it's it's a click. So um, the first wedding I shot, when I got to the hugging part, it was like every hug yeah. was so bad. That's, that's um, something I, I, yeah, that's something I notice because like andrew have you ever done photography at a wedding no no I have. Yeah. Has it's like yeah, I've, I've, it is hard there's a lot it, 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 we know it there's is, a lot it to it and i've done Less i've done for a capturing. couple of friends i've done for a couple of friends and i underestimated the fact that in video i can hold my camera get my frame hit record yeah. and stuff just happens in front of my lens which with photography totally. you have to capture the moment like it's harder it's harder yeah. guys it's like video. Yeah. We've, we we add stuff like we we, we add audio. We add we add motion, <laughs> but we take away the fact that we have to capture like a, a single moment, which is actually really hard. So photographers, it, it, it is hard, <laughs> but the post There's post like the, the post is like hard as well. Easier. easier in post. Yeah, you can actually talk to your mom on the phone while working, which is yeah. like <laughs> the best. Like. <laughs> Ever, because she's like, "Oh, I appreciate that you're talking to me more these days." And I'm like, <laughs> "Yeah, I'm all about to be. And I'm like, no, "She can no. talk to her for an hour. I love her, but like now I'm like editing my picture and talking to her for an hour until she gets tired." <laughs> yeah, it's the best thing ever. <laughs> I love that we've entered mum territory. Mm. Like we've gone so deep in yeah. your life right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that like Monica's mum. I love it. I love um, it. There was one element, uh, well, a couple of elements around the fact that you um, do photography as well that, 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 that I wanted to kind of like um, lean into. And it was, I guess, um, around the kinds of things that photographers do more than videographers on the day, and that's um, like posing and directing the couples. So how have you brought like your experience as a photographer and someone who – you know, like, um, is their job to like direct couples and like lead the day? How have you brought that across into your video? And um, and yeah, how do how do how do you go about working with couples on the the day? Well, it's one of the hardest parts for me, and mm. I guess it's it's a hard part for everybody. Yeah, and it totally depends on the couple, obviously, because there's couples that you don't have to say anything; they just do everything there. Um, but I try not to direct a lot even though it comes like that because people think that I like my pictures are very post but actually I do that when they're models and I'm doing like style shoots but when there's when they're real couples I try not to do that and actually when I talk to them um, um, I tell them that they're not models and that this is not an ad or this is not advertising so I don't want them I hate the word post because it's um, for them, it's scary because I, I need to pose now. It's like, what the fuck? So I try <laughs> to get that out of the picture so they feel like, okay, guys, it's some portraits. And I, the only thing I want to do is portray what you are. So please don't, don't think you need to pose. Um, the only thing I'm going to mm-hmm. do is put you in a beautiful light or spot, and then you can do your thing, whatever you want. And then when they feel like relaxed and then I can start and maybe asking for stuff, you know, because I know it's hard. Um, You put a camera on me and I'll be like, (laughs) I I wouldn't know what to do, you know. So um, and it's that's part of the empathy that we need to have. Um, And that's like one of the moments where you need to be more empathetic. Um, I think you need to be sure that you're not what you're doing so they feel comfortable with that 
Um, but I also laugh with them and tell them I know it's hard and I do some jokes so they feel relaxed and just try to have a good moment. And, and yeah, I do have those, the safety shots that you take, you know, like, okay, luck, and I'll shoot you walking. And I do have my like sh safety things like hold hands and just be there and, you know, mm. That shot, <laughs> the, the shot of Flanagan <laughs> holding. <laughs> how do you how do you feel when you watch Monica shooting that shot? When Monica's in post, looking at Monica shooting that shot. <laughs> oh no no! You you have no idea how my voice. Well, you have you'll have later. My <laughs> voice is horrible. So when I hear <laughs> myself, when I hear myself giving directions in my in this, because now I'm talking with my radio voice. <laughs> and, and wedding, I'm like, yeah, you, you should be holding him, and I'm like screaming, and then I have to hear that, and then I have to, and, and then I have to deliver the raw footage. But they're gonna hear that all their life. They're gonna be holding hands and my fucking voice, just shouting stuff. It's horrible. Amazing. <laughs> I hate to look at that. See, I'm lucky. I never have to deal with that. That's Grace. She has to I, deal with my... I could not listen to myself. Like, I don't even have a radio voice. Like, this is how I always sound, and I sound, like, terrifying. Like, the few times when I shoot with Andrew, I edit myself, and I'm like, I'm fucking not doing that again. I can't hear myself again. <laughs> it's no, it's I, traumatizing. I, I have to find a way to put some tape or anything or something. I hate myself when I hear myself. Like, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> Please. Wow. <laughs> Oh, ben sitting here with his beautiful like, voice, <laughs> wondering what we're talking about. <laughs> well, everyone, everybody hates the sound of, of their own voice. We just need to buy fancy yeah, microphones. Pro microphone, because microphone <laughs> that's, horrible. That's, that's the that's the key. You can just buy a fancy microphone, and then it makes you want to kill yourself just a little bit less when you are editing your own voice. <laughs> beautiful, <laughs> only slightly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> segue um <laughs> there was a, so there's, there's a couple more things i i want to touch off with, with your work um monica grace andrew if you guys have got anything else you want to jump in on um have a think before i start, start to slowly land the plane but um uh and just in terms of like other parts of your work that um sort of I don't know, stand out from the crowd basically and like kind of going back to like a few of the things that you've you've mentioned around like how you work with couples and you don't really pose them and you sort of and sort of lean into like your empathy and try not to be too sort of controlling in that regards um there's an element around your work that um I really like and always want to try and emulate in my own work but I never really do it quite quite right and that's like harnessing imperfection in like a really tasteful way like you use like motion blur or like things out of focus or um sort of compositions that aren't like strictly correct and stuff and so how do you balance like on the day and especially like when you're editing and like what you're including um stuff that other editors would just like leave out and go oh that's just wrong i'm not going to use that how are you sort of working in like imperfections as it were like into your work to make the overall finished product um just you know your look um okay <laughs> so i think that um i was um listening to this uh, music artist i like a lot um the other day talking about creativity and mm -hmm he was pointing out something that really resonated with myself. And I think it's, it's going to answer this question. And it was like, when, when, when you don't have the school, when you don't have the videography God telling mm. you that that's wrong because you didn't want to, I didn't want to film school. Mm. I don't know the rules. I don't, I, I don't know them. So since I don't know them, I fucking do whatever I want. I don't have this little <laughs> man telling me. Um, I don't like, and, and it gives you that the creative um, amplitude, if that word exists in English, mm. 
because um, you don't have restrictions. You don't have mm. this little person that showed you how to do things, telling you that's not correct. That's not a <laughs> shit. Um, if I like it, I like it and I use it. So I think that I have the blessing of not being educated into filming. And I don't, I don't know what's right or wrong in films. Mm. Because I didn't know I, I, I used frames that were not correct. <laughs> but were, you know? No, but I think it goes... I'd love to, yeah. to, to go over a film of mine with you and you telling me <laughs> those parts that are not... <laughs> no, but it's... Because, like, I, I didn't go to There's film school. There's no such thing in film. Yeah. I didn't go to film school either. And so I know what you're saying there around, like, um, not having... Uh, like dogma thrown down your your throat around like not yeah. having set sort of um t- you know skill set sort of um laid out for you but um i think it goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show around just like taste versus skill like your taste mm-hmm. level is at is at this point where you can work with stuff that other people wouldn't choose to work with in a way that is yeah. like yeah it's Okay, the just thing is, I, yeah. I have like the, I have this um like level of um importancia. I don't know if I find the word in English. Like um, things that are more important than others yeah. in, a, yeah. in a frame. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for me, the most important is emotion. So mm-hmm. if that shot has the emotion that I want, I don't care if it's shaky or if it's not well yeah. mm, centered or whatever. If it has what I want to express or want, what I want them to feel. Uh, and, or, or maybe sometimes I have like this part of this song where I need something in particular to go with that music part. Mm. So maybe I found this little, but I think it comes also from, because I'm a bad shooter. So I need no, to but- use everything. <laughs> So sometimes I like calling and I'm like, okay, this was not my best, but I need that moment. And that's the only thing I have because I go alone. Yeah. And it looks good because I fix it in post. No, <laughs> but this, the, I, see, Monica, I you're, you're talking yourself down. You're talking yourself down because like. <laughs> I agree. You're I swear, yourself. dude. It's, I swear. What you said, what you said this... at the start is, is the real answer. Is the okay. you're seeing the you're seeing the emotion, which goes back to empathy, and it's what not everybody has. And then it's yeah. like you you are seeing things that other pe- people don't see, and the because your your shots, they're not just they're, well they're not just they're not bad shots, they're good shots, but they're not like they're not politically uh, correct. They're not politically correct shots. <laughs> exactly, these, they're yeah, not politically these, correct but, shots. The thing is, I'm not. I'm, I mean, they I'm have, not a politically correct person. Yeah. So I think <laughs> but they they have some something. Way, they have an energy. They have an emotion that you're seeing and you're using. So I think, yeah, I think you you I'm had it right. Relating so with. hard to this yeah. right now, like yeah. Me and Grace used to have massive. Like I used to have massive arguments with Grace about. Like obviously, I shoot Grace edits. I don't have any say in what she does because she's like really good at what she does, and I don't have any say. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Um, as it should be (laughs) but like i used to get really angry because i'm a guy i've got an ego and i'm like man i'm shooting just as well as those other guys but you're using all my shit shots the ones that they would never put into their films (laughs) and she go yeah i'm not editing for you you idiot i'm editing for a couple and i'm like what what do you mean where's my where's my shot that beautiful (laughs) (laughs) no one cares about that stuff like it has no emotion well, to it. It has like yeah. no value to the couple. So you, anyone can string together a bunch of cinematic, beautiful shots, right? But I think it takes more skill to make the candid, messy moments or your stuff ups, as it were, look better. Because it does. You have to like think about what music you're going to use, how you're going to amplify that moment. Yeah, great. Really but you should, yours. you should, you should put a bit of the good stuff also. Put <laughs> Come I on. put the good stuff. I just like to stitch him up every now and then. I mean, do it for you, man, dude. I, if I, like, I put the crappy stuff, but I also, like, if I have this beautiful shirt, I put it in somehow. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's, 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 that's why Ben thinks I'm a good shooter. 
<laughs> <laughs> but I think it comes down to whether you're editing for yourself and other filmmakers or you're editing for your couple yeah. and people that are going to yeah. actually watch this and feel totally. feel the shots and feel the story and connect with the story. Like I think we get too sucked into sometimes like being, oh, my God, I'm an amazing shooter and da-da-da-da. Nobody gives a shit. Like, honestly, nobody yeah. cares. <laughs> No, well, I, yeah. I mean, I do. Like, the thing is that I have this, um, and I guess everybody has their. The, it's part of the ego that tells you you're not good enough, and you're like, uh, um, when I see those, I don't know, uh, those wedding films that perfectly shot, they look like fucking movies, and I sometimes I think, okay, if I had that combined to. What I have, like editing skills and whatever, I would be like the best videographer ever. I think I, I need to go to film school or something because I need to shoot like that. I'm always looking into other people's films and seeing things that I don't have and thinking that, oh, they look so sharp. How do they do it? It's like other people's videos, <laughs> like everybody else's, they look sharper than mine. But yeah. Monica, you put like a lot of brain. Of course, it's not going to look sharp. <laughs> like, you can't have both. So I feel like the brain like, is I'm part always, of your brand. <laughs> yeah, I'm always seeing cool. other people's works and seeing stuff that I do wrong and that my that lacks, like my videos doesn't have. But it's something that we'll we'll always have. I think. Yeah, it's, that's the thing. Like that. the secret is, is that everybody feels that way. The films you're looking at yeah. and thinking, "Oh, that's perfect," they feel that way. Everybody feels that. Yeah. Everybody has imposter syndrome. Everybody's th- th- thinks thinks the grass is greener. Everybody thinks, you know, oh, I I wish I had that. You know, I wish I had their gear. I wish I had their skill. I wish I had. I was shooting their weddings. Everybody thinks that. The thing is, the thing is that um, I'm, I'm, there's one thing that I'm sure of, and it's like I want to be. A, I want to keep working the way I do. Um, which is a very relaxed and free um, way of, of shooting weddings. I come in with my little backpack, smoke my cigarette, talk to the grandmother, go around, <laughs> have a drink, and then start shooting. And I'm like another guest in the wedding. I don't come there with like the drone and the, all the things that <laughs> those guys have because I wouldn't feel good. You know, it would be so stressful because yeah. I would lose the fucking thing and or, or don't have the little thing needed to. So I would lose a moment. So I need to be able to work the way I like to work, which is like this, like in, a, in the most simple way. Um, so I know I can't have the dolly or how do you call the little thing they have for a gimbal. little gimbal. Like, yeah, the gimbal. I love a gimbal shot. Of course, they look amazing. But that, that's not me because I would have to bring that shit into the wedding and I don't know how to use that thing. Um, and I would have to calibrate it. Calibrate? If I have to calibrate anything, I wouldn't be able to shoot a wedding. Um, yeah. Calibrate? Come on. I haven't calibrated a monitor in years. So, no, but this is, this so is I need to find yeah. a way to be able to shoot like that. Mm, yeah, this is interesting because I've, I've met and spoke to um, other creatives who have as this similar approach where um, you're basically trying to remove as many barriers between you and, this, and, the, and your subject. Like totally. you want as little shit in the way between you and them because but like that energy between you and them is the magic and i think that's totally. like you know like you, you you are one of those people who work that way where you work off the energy and the emotion and the connection between you and your couples and it's it's rare and it's really really cool to see <laughs> i don't know awkward peace sign for the for the for the oh. people at home listening <laughs> yeah no so I, I just wanted to to say that and say that you're, you're awesome and and you are a beautiful em- empathetic um and connected emotional filmmaker which is cool to see um yeah so yeah right back at you um grace andrew 
Any final questions before I hit her with the last one? Whoa. Anything about post? I've got so many, but my brain's like giving up because I'm like, fired. oh my God, I'm so excited. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, okay, thing, okay, okay. Question for, for Grace about Monica's work. What, what, what do you think about um, seeing Monica's work um, sort of spark something different? And like, what did you see back in 2016 that you're like, fuck, okay, I need to change what I'm doing? Oh my God, I don't even know. I was actually having a laugh before when like you said that you look at other people's work and you're like, why isn't my footage that sharp? Why isn't this? Why isn't it that? Because that's what it was for me when I saw yours. I was like to Andrew, like, why isn't our footage that sharp? Like, why, like, <laughs> where's all this emotion coming from that we're, like, that we're not doing? So mine, like what I loved about your work was that actually really funny. I like that you don't think you're super cinematic with your shooting because I always thought that your stuff really was really like a tier above in the way you shoot. I don't know what it was. Like, I, I just, I don't know. I just fell in love with the way you tell stories and, like, pull people's little idiosyncrasies apart and things like that. So, a I good, don't know. I can't even put my finger on it. A good read of character, I think. Like, yeah, I yeah. Grace showing me that. You connect your couples, like, within the first, like, 20 seconds or something. It's crazy. Yeah. Like, as a viewer. It's really cool. Yeah, and I think, like, that's the thing that's underrated is that people think that you have a cinematic shot and that it will connect you to a character or a story, but it it really doesn't. Like, a collection of drone shots and a collection of pu- beautiful, like, perfectly framed, perfectly sharp shots will not tell you anything about a character. I think it disconnects you. Mm. I yeah. think yeah. if it's, for, in my opinion, if it's too perfect, even though mm. I love those kind of shots... Mm. It gives you the sensation that you're watching a movie, not a video. I don't want to make movies, at least for weddings. That's um, I want. I want it to be more close to a home video, but beautifully shot. Yeah. In, mm. uh, how I can do it. Yeah. So it's like find, finding that balance. It's what takes my. Um, I just lost the word. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> no, so good. Yeah. And your work has you know, always I, been really like, um, like you also have like a really editorial style. Like I know you do a lot of styled shoots and work outside of weddings as well. But then like I've watched film of, films of yours, like even like um, I think it was Pablo and Pablo and someone, and Diego? Diego? Oh, the G couple with a blue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and like I, I yeah. remember there being like a scene in that where they were both like staying there doing like this coordinated like head movement, and I'm like, did you direct yeah. that? Like, what happened there? Yes. That was, like because, that seemed to put that, out. That's that's a couple that they they were they loved to post. I mean, they yeah, were cool. yeah. super, yeah. you know, they 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 loved to post. So I took that and use it in my um like for for like. I could tell since the minute I, I saw them that they would love to post because we did a selfie yeah. and they automatically did, did like this. <laughs> and, and if you have a little bit of, um, if you're smart, yeah. So I say, okay, so I can do with them whatever I want. Yeah. And they will love it. They would have fun doing it because mm. they like to post. So it's going to be their moment yeah. of posing, you know? So, so you're leaning into just, that you're leaning into their style again. Like that's, they love that. So that's what you're giving them. Like you're giving them direction yes, per se or exactly. whatever. Yeah. That's and cool. they loved it. We had so much fun doing that. Yeah. That was, that was a sick film. That was fucking fun. We've got to put up a couple of Monica's films on the, yeah. on the account. So 100%. people can see what we're talking oh, about. Yeah. Is, yeah. We definitely <laughs> So love many references, film. mate. But actually yeah. the, like I haven't posted a new film in ages. <laughs> like, that's something that I want to, to maybe it helps someone that we have the urge that we need to share mm. things all the time and yeah. that, um, and you need to be like fresh and showing stuff like, um, couples don't, don't care what year yeah. that wedding was, um, happened. They just want to see good work. And in my opinion, it's more important to, to curate the things that you put out there than putting a lot of stuff. So I haven't been able to share anything because I don't like anything of the things that I've done. Oh, so, dude, I'm always waiting for you to share something. I'm like, where's the fucking next film? Like, I'm, I'm well, I haven't shot a wedding in fucking two years. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> I'm an over 
oversharer. Yeah. So it's, I'm like the, uh, I'm a massive oversharer. I'm like, Grace, calm the fuck down. But I just, I can't. I'm like, but, but if you want to share, share it's like, okay. But, but not if, it, if it's not right for you. Because I think I, I know people yeah. who struggle. If you love to share and you want to share it and you feel great about your work, then do it. But I feel people that they, they get overwhelmed with the sharing part. And yeah, dudes, I haven't shared anything in ages. And here I am. And I keep, people keep going into my website and fucking booking me. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think my last video was like, like 2018 or 19. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's great. But it's true. Like it, you don't you don't need to. Like I'm I'm the same on my on my like I post a fucking shitload on the podcast account. But like on my <laughs> on my wedding account, I haven't posted a film in months, months and months and months. Like my sort of top nine grid hasn't changed in fucking ages. And yeah, I keep getting bookings and stuff, so it doesn't matter. Couples don't care. They couples yeah. want to land on your account, see some cool stuff that they can connect with. And totally. they'll hit, and they'll hit and they'll hit your website. So, yeah, just have a good website. Yeah, well, your website's fucking <laughs> banging, mate. Jesus, yes. my like, husband did that. That oh, is oh fuck, legend. Like, yeah, and he did it from from scratch. It's all code. It's fucking no epic. Templates. Um, we almost lose our marriage. <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Um, yeah. but it, it happened right. like, like um, he did a great yeah. job yeah can we talk about the fucking film wearing texture over everything it's amazing like oh yeah, that's 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 a that's a plugin that's you can crazy. do it like you can find it i can <laughs> all right i'm gonna put on hey, my website I can, too <laughs> no, no, i can I, pass I, it i, I can it. i can i i'll I'll, get, I'll pass the the link to you okay i'll ask my husband i'll take it to you guys. <laughs> it's go. so cool right, right. All right, everybody going to have film grain. It's like, yeah, what it, I think of when I think of it is sometimes weirdly it's grain, like film grain, like that filmic art. It was his idea, like, and I was like, you're such a fucking genius. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. I love it, yeah. It's so sexy. Good husband. Yeah. Yeah, he's cool. so good. Fantastic. Right, so well, sick. team, um, I, yeah, I'm i going to basically wrap, wrap us up with a final question. And it's probably going to be a question that Monica's going to hate because it's a big one and there's <laughs> no succinct, succinct, easy answer. But um, <laughs> for everyone at home who's listened to the episode and goes, yeah, I want to I want to make films like Monica. I, I, I want to be Monica. Um, how can people who, you know, wedding videographers who are feeling like skillfully competent and um uh, making these sort of beautiful cinematic clean weddings um but don't quite have that you know um emotional connection that empathetic sort of um connection how can people start to yeah sort of flex their empathetic muscles connect with their couples better um and just i guess remove a bit of the ego and switch it for a bit of empathy in their filmmaking Just to put you on the spot there, Monica. That was the best face. Um, um, I think I think it's something that I was born with, or at least my parents um, educated me with, like to be empathetic <laughs> and to think about others. So I don't know how to learn that, like how you can learn that but um i always tell the the people that um i give the the one-on-ones um to make like a list of things that describe their couple and and use it use those words like those characteristics as hashtags for their video let me explain this okay so if you will describe this person as fun, quirky, um, I don't know, extrovert, and let me find another one, and I don't know, tall, whatever. Um, <laughs> if you could, if you could use those words and convert them into hashtags to define your video, okay. 
Okay, maybe I'm not ex- explaining no, myself. No, no, yeah, I see where you're going. No, no, yeah. we're all, we're okay. all made a break so, of this fucking genius, so this is great. Okay, so <laughs> it's like you can, you can find adjectives not only for the couple but for the event itself because I think it's important also. And use those hashtags to find your music and to oh, to to describe your edit okay so if you're if your couple it's fun and it's quirky and it's extrovert maybe your your music and your editing should be fun quirky and extrovert and you can if you can define your edit with the same hashtags as your couple then you have a match if yeah. I does that Amazing. make sense? Yes. That's I love that. That's such genius. a good way of explaining it's, it. It is. It's, okay. I knew yeah, I knew that like, was going to happen. I knew you were going to start off going, "Oh, I don't know," and then you'd come out with some fucking gold. So <laughs> she's like, "By the way, he's had to do it's, everything." It's just an exercise that I um um I give to the to the people that ask for it one to one. That's amazing. It's, it, I think it's a good exercise. Mm. Yeah. That's a fantastic exercise and so simple and such a way of removing any, um, I guess, yeah, selfish want to impart you onto the couple totally. and, and starting with the couple yeah. and going, what's them and how can I work with that? So it's just a complete And route. it also opens your, it takes you out of your, because we all have this safe, um, mm. especially editors, that we have the safe way, like the formula, we always end up, I, I, I think you should relate with this, right? Yeah. You feel like, okay, yeah, I'm yeah. doing the same Revert formula. Back to you. Before. Yeah. Okay. Habits. So I think when you do that, it takes you out of, of the, of your personal formula to tell a story because that's another story and there's another couple. So if you use the hashtag trick, you could probably, even though it's, it's like, going out of like to pick up a song out of your usual list or 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 mood you know maybe yeah. you can go and find some mexican whatever and spice things up you know because yeah. music it's a very big part of how i edit you know it depends on the music i choose totally mm. yeah absolutely yeah amazing wow um Monica, that was a fantastic way to finish and an amazing conversation with you. That was that was awesome. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you guys for inviting um, me. I, I mean, feel so yeah. honored. And Grace. what you guys had, like, pull up, um, it's amazing. I love every trick, like, every advice that you give there. And it's all so visually cool. <laughs> I really love it. No, I think when I found that, it was like, God, we needed this. Because I don't know why the videography world is so lame, man. It's, so, it's There's no <laughs> workshop. But am I true or not? There's no workshops or events or anything happen, happening for there's a videographer. Not. There's like I a mean, there's lot. Like, it's film camp, but we had to cancel that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Andrew's yeah. trying to well, plug if himself. You, if yeah. you ever, ever are doing anything, any kind of event... I would please love to come. Sounds good. <laughs> we so would good. love to have you. <laughs> Do something. Yeah, first call. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> cool. All righty. So well, um, yeah, we're going to have obviously links to all of Monica's work below, links to the website. You can go check out that. Just glory. Um, yeah, nothing else left to say <laughs> other than thank you again. And um, probably looking forward to the next time we have you on the podcast, uh, hopefully. Oh, I would love that. Amazing. <laughs> cool. All righty. Well, that's going to do us, guys, and we'll uh, see you all next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.